Hello guys, how's everybody been doing? Thank you very much for joining me today. And I've been thinking about what other things I could show you from the uh, vault of all the projects that I've done. And I found that this project in particular has got a lot of potential behind it because I've saved a lot of my process. And there's also a lot of incremental saved files that show progression at every sort of two hours or so. So I believe that's gonna be um, really useful for you to understand what changes happen and after how much time and what's kind of the focus um, as you go along through your process and things get more difficult what how the focus changes so luckily I have this recording of I think it must be the first couple of hours of the process so as you can see you've got their traces of sort of my thought process and how I imagine this so you can see that it looks more like a tarantula now it's got those like spidery eyes and the mouth has got a lot of teeth in it and you kind of see the claws that are in the front but the cool thing about this project is how it evolved and what eventually it became um, because I've shifted away from this visual language because I felt like I found a bit more potential in a different direction. So that's something that you can think about guys that sometimes you start with an idea then you figure out look I can turn this into something a lot better if I just change it. So this is the early stages I'm just gonna start playing the video and I'm just gonna um, talk you through what I'm doing. So at this stage the first one or two hours as you might have heard me mention it before anything goes. If I find something that I like, I go with it. I don't think about it twice just because it's so early and I want to take advantage of every good idea that comes to mind. Now you see me working around the eyes a little bit um, and there you go. I've just changed my mind. I don't think I want this to be a tarantula anymore <laughs> because I looked at it and I thought, you know, what? I don't think that's going to work in the end. So I'm just going to, I've just deleted the eyes and I'm going like a, a little bit of a different way now. So as you can see guys, I'm floating around the model, looking around all the angles, trying to figure out the best possible way to find those eyes. Now, if I just scroll back a little bit, what I was trying to do over here with these lines is create that um, sense of tension in the skin. So this guy has his mouth open really powerfully, I suppose. So it kind of pinches all of that skin upwards, just like a tiger would, you know what I mean? When you, when you see a tiger roaring, that skin sort of pinches a lot and you get those wrinkles in there. So that's what I was trying to do with this guy over here. And I kind of like that vibe and I just kept pushing with it a little bit forward. Now, now I'm gonna try to figure out how the nose is gonna look like. So you can see it over there. I'm just putting a few, um, a few details in it. And just experimenting with details on the rest of the head. Now, as you can see, it kind of picks up a little bit of that gorilla vibe with that flat head. Um, and I'm still, I'm still thinking about what I could keep from that original idea and trying to experiment with ideas <laughs> using a lot of Damien standard and the way I sort of lift those points over there into into a sharp angle uh, is by using the move brush but with the accu curve setting enabled so instead of the move brush uh, pulling um, the surface of an object in like a soft way kind of like that like a round shape instead of that it just pushes it into a point so you can do that a lot of times in order to fix some angles and get some pointy bits into your model. It's quite a useful technique. So yeah, just exaggerating a little bit of that open mouth to create that illusion of tension and of like danger and the fact that this animal is sort of in a challenging sort of pose. Experimenting a little bit with the details in the mouth and trying to work my way around the whole model at the same time and letting my mind get distracted with different details so that the model comes together as a whole. I'm not spending more than a couple of minutes on any detail. I'm just working my way around it all the time, looking at it from all angles. <clears throat> yeah, trying to figure out where teeth would go, what kind of anatomy you'd be able to see uh, inside the mouth. I'm probably going to work a little bit and try to figure out how the throat um, um, sort of expands into the into the thoracic cavity so you can see how I'm just expanding it a little bit. Guys, this is something that you normally won't do in a regular character, but because the open mouth, the roar of this guy is such an important element of this sculpture, I'm definitely gonna put all of the time that I can into it just so that it comes out as best as it possibly could and then I don't have to sort of avoid showing the mouth open because I haven't put enough effort in it. So right from the start I'm putting as much effort into this as I can because I know it is a key feature of my model. <clears throat> like, that's what I mean guys, if you find something that's good in your model 
don't chicken out of putting all the effort that you can into it because it's going to reward you um, towards the end. So in terms of the speed, I think it's, this is about two, three, up to maybe as much as four times faster than I would normally work. So you've got about two minutes of a part of the process. This must have taken me, I think, between half an hour and an hour at least. So you see, I found a little bit of a shape that I liked and I just enhanced it. I pulled it just to make it a little bit more standout feature. This is something that you normally do with any model, guys. You, you, you put some details in initially, you look at that detail from a different angle and you kind of see a little bit of potential in it and you start playing with it and you embellish it a little bit. This is what I'm doing at the moment. So if we go back a little bit to just see the beginning of it, you can see how things have evolved kind of naturally in the same direction but I've also made a bit of quite a few changes along the way hinting a little bit of anatomy just made the mouth a little bit wider or wider open I should say and at this stage, I'm basically playing with the tissue and trying to understand which sides of the model are tough, uh, which areas of the model have exposed skin. At the moment, I'm trying to play with the idea that this guy's got like an exoskeleton, like a tarantula would have. So I'm trying to figure out where muscle would show or pieces like uh, skin and stuff like that. So I'm trying to create a little bit of separation and polish surfaces in a way that creates a distinction between what's tough what's hard and what's a little bit softer so you can see trying to find the areas along the eyes putting a little bit of detail into that making it a little bit softer the nose area putting a little bit more detail into that and that is something that I do quite often guys I find a surface that looks a little bit planar and what I do with it, I go around the edge of that um, surface and I sort of um, trace it with a standard brush in order to create this sort of ridge around it and then using the, the polish brush, I go over it and it kind of picks up and reacts to that ridge that I created with a standard brush and it helps flatten out the area a little bit smoother and a little bit more naturally. Uh, this is something that I use quite often. See, boom. I feel like the standard brush and the hard polish brush work really well together because the polish brush, when you polish a surface, it kind of reacts to ridges and it sort of helps build the volume in between. So if you have a surface that's like this and you've got two ridges on the edges, if you polish it in the middle, it's kind of going to try to elevate that middle bit until it kind of levels with the ridges on the sides. So that's kind of a good thing that works really well with me sometimes and you can keep it in mind. But if you use the polish brush and you want the uh, volume to go up or if you want to add volume, you'll have to press the Alt key as you're polishing. So instead of the brush excavating in your model, it sort of builds up. Yeah, I'm just playing with details, messing around. I'm not really too bothered about or too particular what I'm doing. I'm just kind of free flowing. Most of these details will change. I'm aware of it, but I'm basically just trying to do as much as I can to understand this model a little bit better. Hinting a little bit of the um, trapezius or neck area, trying to figure out how this guy's skull reacts to his anatomy. Just hinting a few details here and there, whenever, whatever I feel like I can put them. Hi guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if this format is quite entertaining for you. I hope it is. It's quite fun for me to do. Um, let me know if you'd like to see more of these time lapses without commentary. And let me know if you'd like me to show you how to make one of these for yourselves as well. It's quite easy, not really that hard to set up. And I think you'll find uh, that is really valuable in terms of presenting your work to your clients. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thank you very much for your support. And I'll see you in the next one.